Uh, greetings, Matt fans. All right, so this is chapter five, and this is day one and two notes. So I just want to make a point here that I'm combining both days into one video. So if you missed day one, and you need to make sure you watch day one before you watch day two. But if you just missed day two, then you got to go probably halfway into this video and, and uh, find out like where I'm, uh, and I'll kind of give you an idea of where I, uh, I kind of change over from day one to day two, okay? All right, so our uh, first topic here is, is basically identities. All right, so we're gonna talk about a couple different identities that you guys already know, and then we're gonna get some new ones, okay? So the first identities that you guys already know are recalled reciprocal identities. Okay, so reciprocal identities are this. Sine of theta is one over cosecant of theta, right? We already know that. Or you can also say cosecant of theta is one over sine of theta, right? Same thing, okay? And then of course, cosine of theta is one over secant of theta, or secant of theta is one over cosine of theta, or tangent of theta is one over tangent of theta, or one over, sorry, one over cotangent of theta, that's super messy, one over cotangent of theta, or you could say cotangent of theta is one over tangent of theta. Okay, cool. So those are uh, our reciprocal identities. Pretty easy. And then we also know something called quotient identities, and that is easy. It's tangent of theta is sine of theta over cosine of theta, and cotangent of theta equals cosine theta over sine of theta. Now I want to tell you, math fans, in your Google Drive, there is a identity sheet, and it's all blank, um, but it's got different categories, and you just need to fill this in. And this is important to fill it in because it's a good way to memorize and study it, but also you are going to see this that exact sheet as a quiz right before the test. So I'm going to make sure that you guys know the identities, and then on the test, I will give you the identities. Okay, but that identical review sheet in the Google Drive is the identical quiz that I'm going to give you before the test, the day before the test. So start filling it in and make sure you know what you're doing. Okay. All right. So these are the ones that you know already. So now let's switch over to um, something called Pythagorean identities. Okay, Pythagorean identities. Now, you guys know Pythagorean identities, or Pythagorean theorem, of course, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but we're talking about trig. You guys should know it's x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Okay, so that's an important one. And we're going to use two more. So cosine of theta, if you guys remember, that's our tic-tac-toe function, is x over r, and sine of theta equals y over r. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cross multiply. So I get x equals r cosine of theta and y equals r sine of theta. All right, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute that x for that x and that y for that y. So x squared, which is going to be r cosine of theta squared plus y squared, which is our sine of theta squared equals r squared, okay? And then I'm gonna square each of those terms, so I get r squared cosine squared of theta plus r squared sine squared of theta equals r squared. Now, if I was solving for this, I would have to factor the r squared out, but I'm not solving, I'm actually simplifying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide all sides by r squared. And then I'm going to kind of rewrite this, 
because all the R's cancel, right? Everything cancels here, except that's a one that cancels. So I'm gonna rewrite this to what I, the way I want you to memorize it. It's sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one. I'm gonna put a red box around this baby because it's not red. Do not give you red. Let me try that again. Okay, so here's a red box around this. Okay, that is super important. You, this is one of the identities you have to know. Got to know that one. All right. So there's two other identities. I could derive them as well because I just derived this. And you don't necessarily know how to derive it. I just want to show you where it came from. But you have to, you got to know that. So there's two other ones that I could derive. And it's with, sine, or with secant and cosecant and tangent, cotangent. But I'm just going to give them to you. So you got to know. Them. All right. So it's going to be the other identities are tangent squared of theta plus one equals secant squared of theta and cotangent squared of theta plus one equals cosecant squared of theta. So these math fans all get red boxes around them. So I'm gonna put a few stars around them too because they are all super important. Gotta memorize them. There's a category for that, Pythagorean identities. There's three blanks in uh, on that sheet, so make sure you fill it in. So how do you memorize those? I mean, obviously they're right here. You know, you look at them, but how do you memorize them? Well, the first one, that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, it's probably the most critical one. You see that one more often than any. And the way you memorize that one is, well, you kind of just have to know it, but Think of our old cheer, right? We're tangent of 45, right? We're at the football game. We're tangent of 45. We're tangent of 45. Well, now we have a new cheer. We're sine squared plus cosine squared. We're sine squared plus cosine squared. We're sine squared plus cosine squared. So that is a nice little cheer, which all the maths, all my math fans would understand that, but all the opponents, right, are, are, uh, the, the team we're playing, they would get confused, fumble the ball, interceptions, it would be bad, and we'd win the game. Okay, so you might want to try that cheer out. Now you got the other two, the tangent squared of theta plus one and the secant squared of theta, or the cotangent squared of theta plus one. So how do you memorize that? Well, understand that the tangent and the secant go together and the cotangent and the cosecant go together. So what I mean by that is the cos go with the cos and the non-cos go with the non-cos, right? Cotangent, cosecant, tangent, secant. So you kind of memorize know them that way. And by the way, these are all squared terms. Please do not say sine plus cosine is one. Okay, that's like saying Pythagorean theorem is going, oh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. I'll just take the square root of the whole thing and get a plus b equals c. And that is not true. So just be careful about that, okay? All right, so kids struggle with that, which one gets the plus one? You know the tangent goes with the secant and the cotangent goes with the cosecant, but how do you know which one gets the plus one? The way I look at it is tangent, when you think of tangent, don't you think of the yaks? And you see that plus one? I think of the yaks getting the bonus point. So you gotta give the bonus point to the yaks, not to the secant. Don't be giving the secant bonus points. It doesn't deserve it. The yaks gets the bonus point. And same thing with the ixoi. I know the ixoi is a little evil, okay? But you should definitely give the ixoi the bonus point. And don't be giving the cosecant the bonus point. Okay, so cotangent gets the bonus point and tangent gets the bonus point not secant or cosecant, okay? So those are your three Pythagorean identities. All right, so let's talk about our negative one, is, or next one is called negative angle identities. Okay, so negative angle identities. So it's kind of a sad topic to talk about. I'm not my, not my favorite topic because it, it's kind of almost like hanging out with the angle of depression. Okay, you're just not very happy. It's negative angle, but um, I'm just kidding. So it's actually not bad. All right, so negative angle identities are, I'm going to do like basically three examples. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to do sine and cosecant because they got to go together, right? Um, there one, one is negative, the other one's negative because sine and cosecant are just reciprocal of each other. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a nice little picture here. And I'm gonna sketch four locations. This is gonna be pi over six. This is, I'm gonna to refer to this as negative pi over six. This is going to be 
5 pi over 6 and this is going to be negative 5 pi over 6. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do the sine of each of these. So I'm going to take the sine of that one and the sine of that one and the sine of that one and the sine of that one. Okay, so the sine of pi over 6, you guys should know the sine of 30 is 1 half. And the sine of negative pi over 6, well, the reference angle is still pi over 6, right? Um, but then it's negative because we're in the fourth quadrant, so it's negative 1 half. So the sine of 5 pi over 6, again, reference angle is pi over 6, so isn't that positive 1 half? And, of course, in the third quadrant, it's negative 1 half. Okay, cool. So I can actually make a, a, a statement here. I can say sine of a negative angle is the same as the positive angle, but the negative of that. Okay? So if you, just as an example, if I said um, sine of negative pi over 6, do you agree that it's the same thing as sine of pi over 6? Except it's a negative in front of it. Okay, okay, so that's our first one. Of course, that's with also with cosecant. And let's do cosine. Now let's do tangent next. So we have tangent and uh, cotangent. So again, I'm going to draw a nice picture here. And we're going to go actually kind of in the middle here because we're going to do pi over 4, negative pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 and negative 3 pi over 4. Okay? And then we're going to do, you know, same thing here. We're going to take the tangent of all these. Okay. So the tangent of pi over 4 is kind of like our sine squared plus cosine squared, it's 1. And the tangent, so they're all reference angles of pi over 4. That means they're all either 1 or negative 1. Of course, in the fourth quadrant, it's also, or it's negative 1. And in the second quadrant, it's negative 1. And in the third quadrant, tangent's positive there, so it's positive 1. Okay, so I can kind of make the same idea here. I could say tangent of a negative angle. Right, tangent of negative pi over 4 is the same thing as tangent of pi over 4 but negative. Okay, and then our last one is cosine. So cosine and secant. Okay, so let's make a nice little graph again here. And we'll pick four values. We're going to do pi over 3, 2 pi over 3, negative pi over 3, and negative 2 pi over 3. Okay, so we're going to do cosine of these. And cosine of that. And cosine of that. And cosine of that. Okay, cool. So uh, these are, of course, they're 60 degrees. Cosine of 60 is 1 half. So this one's going to be positive 1 half. And in the th fourth quadrant, it's also positive 1 half, right? And in the second quadrant, it's negative one half. And in the fourth or the third quadrant, it's negative one half. So this one's a little bit different. And this one is cosine of a negative angle. Do you guys agree that the cosine of a negative angle is the same thing as it's positive? Interesting. Okay. Right. So if you it, if you just look at, it, I mean, I can even do cosine of negative 2 pi over 3, isn't this the same as the cosine of positive 2 pi over 3? It's the exact same thing. So that's why you can make this one. Now, how do you remember these? Well, okay, ready? I know it's a little cheesy, but the cosine, notice the cosine stays positive. So I like to say, I'm going to write this in green, okay? If I can actually click on it, I'm going to say cos is pos. Oh, yeah. Okay, so cosine of a negative angle is positive. Cause is pause. And that's a great cheer, too. At the at a football game, basketball game, you might say, and you start out, like, low, like a low voice. 
causes pause, causes pause, causes pause, causes pause, causes pause. Okay, and then it just, I mean, you can go crazy. It's just an awesome chair, all right? And then you might say, well, how, okay, causes pause, but what about sine and tangent? Well, they're negative angles. So the way I look at that is sinning and tanning are bad for you, right? It's bad as sin. And tanning, you get skin cancer. It's bad for you too. So sinning and tanning are bad for you. That's why they're, they stay negative. But cause is pause. Okay? So I know, kind of a cheesy way to remember it, but eh, whatever. It, it works. And again, you might say, well, how do these, how can I even use these negative angle identities? I, I just want to kind of show you an example. I think it's kind of a cool thing. If I said sine of negative 30 degrees, so sine of negative 30 degrees, um, back in the day, you would have to go like this and go negative 30. Right, you would have to go, or actually you would add 360 to that, wouldn't you? And you get 330. And then you would do 330, and you would kind of deal with that. But guys, now, this is really nice. If I said sine of negative 30, I can just pull the negative out. That's negative sine of 30. And we already know sine of 30 is 1 half, and then it's negative. It's sweet. So you can deal with a negative angle now by just pulling it out and making, making it a positive angle and just putting the negative in front of the sine of the tangent. Okay, so again, tangent of negative 60 is the same thing as negative tangent of 60. And tangent of 60 is root 3, so it's negative root 3. And cosine is even better, because cosine of negative 45 degrees is the exact same thing as cosine of 45, causes pause, baby, which then is root two over two okay so that's kind of the useful thing we'll, we'll get to use that a little bit more often but it's kind of a handy thing all right okay so um why are we teaching you all these different identities right what's what's the point of, of doing all these identities i mean is it for torture reasons okay i'm not going to lie to you it's a little bit for torture reasons okay but the main reason we're teaching you all this is so you can verify identities, which is really what the second part of this note sheet is. So it's just kind of cursor down here. Okay, this says verify. So before we actually get started, I, I want to do a few things. So I want to actually right here, we're going to verify identities. So verifying identities means prove that the left side left side equals the right side okay so the left side equals the right side and what you're going to do is we'll talk about how to pick the more difficult side but you're going to you're going to work on one one side only and do not touch the other side. Okay, do not touch the other side. Only one side only. In fact, if you do work on both sides, I mark the whole thing wrong and you get no credit for it. And then there's crying and you use lots of my Kleenex and it's just brutal. Okay, so do not touch the other side. Only work on one side. So what we're going to do is um, a, a kind of our method, and we're going to learn more as we go on here, but the method is going to be uh, change terms to sines and cosines. So if you see a secant, you might want to change it to a uh, in, into one over cosine, etc. So you change the sines and cosines. Um, we're going to use Pythagorean identities. Actually, we're going to see them all, but I, specifically Pythagorean identities means you're going to look, at for, look for sine squareds and tangent squareds and secant squareds. You're going to look for all those different trig functions, squared and ones, because that's all tangent squared plus one, secant or sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So you're going to look for all six trig functions, squared and ones, and that's going to help you simplify things. Okay, and you might use some of the negative angle identities as well. And there might be a little bit of factoring involved 
and foiling and whatnot. But anyway, that's kind of the deal. That's so verifying identity. Identity is proving the left is equal to right. Now on day three, math fans, day three, I'm going to actually show you how to pick the correct side, and we're going to get to some a little bit more advanced problems. Okay, but for now you're basically going to be working on the left-hand side. I'm going to be kind of nice about it. Okay? And you might say, well, what happens if it's not true? I promise you it will be true. I will never give you a problem that doesn't work. All right? So if you get a problem and it doesn't work, you you either did something wrong or maybe you copied the, the initial problem down wrong. Okay? So then you got to go back and check it. But otherwise, it's uh, it'll always work out for you, okay? Okay, so for number one, um, again, working on the left-hand side, so it says tangent theta, cosine theta equals sine theta. So I, if you have to pause for more than four to five seconds, you got to think sines and cosines. I cannot stress that enough, sines and cosines. So I see tangent right away, and I'm like, oh, okay, um, that's sine of theta over cosine theta times cosine theta and oh cosines cancel out and I get sine of theta and I you notice I didn't write sine of, equal sine of theta each time you don't have to write it each time if you work on one side just work in the one side I don't care about writing equals the other thing it just don't waste your time okay but your very last step you should write sine of theta equals sine of theta and then you should put a check mark there okay so I am looking for this equal to with a check mark and then the other side written okay so kids sometimes they don't really know what they're doing and they'll put all kinds of garbage and then at the end they'll go eh, equal to and they'll put a check mark and they'll go like sign the theta equals sign the theta check mark like okay cool i don't know what i'm doing but i hope mr curvis uh, just looks for the check mark what you guys need to understand is i do not look just for equal to signs with check marks above it okay because that's actually called and I'm going to write this in red I do not accept if you do these if you use CMs okay so no CMs and what does CM stand for it actually stands for cheesy method so cheesy method okay you can't use cheesy method so cheesy method is not knowing what you're doing putting random stuff down there and then going, oh, uh, check mark with uh, equal to sign, uh, Mr. Curvis, so he'll go, I'll fake him out. Okay, I'm not easily faked out because what happens when I grade these, I don't look for check marks with equal to signs. Okay, what I do is I actually scan everything and make sure I look at all your steps. And if you have all your steps and with a check mark, uh, equal to sign and a check mark, I give you full credit for it. Understand math fans, you have to show your work. Do not do it work in your head and go, oh, well, uh, this cancels out, so I'm just going to write this in there. I don't want to see, you can't do any work in your head. Everything has to be written out. You can never write too much out. I will never write, take points off if you got too much work shown. Okay? So make sure that you, uh, you show your work. If there's a step where you're like, you know what? I wonder if I should show my work here. D just do it. Don't question it. Just do it. Okay? All right, so that was the first one. That's pretty easy. Okay, now let's look at number two. Well, again, there's all kinds of different ways to do these problems. I'm trying to show you, you know, one way to do it. And like in this case here, uh, I'm working on the left-hand side. I got to foil it. And by the way, don't get faked out by a, a sign there and a minus sign or plus sign, um, S-I-N sign, uh, in that thinking, oh, it's a Pythagorean identity. Remember, it's got to be squared. So don't get faked out for that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to FOIL this. So I'm going to get 1 times 1. So it's 1 uh, plus sine of theta minus sine of theta minus sine squared of theta. Okay. These cancel out. So you have 1 minus sine squared of theta. So here's the deal. You, you guys should have your eye on this guy right here. I need to, it needs to be cosine of theta. And if I see a 1 minus sine squared of theta, I'm going to look at my identities. In fact, you should have your identities in front of you on that little sheet, okay, that I, I told you that was uh, in the Google Drive. Because you should say, oh, let's see, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta 
equals 1. And you go, oh, wait, I have 1 minus sine squared of theta. Is there any way I can manipulate that to give me 1 minus sine squared of theta? And do you guys agree? If I subtract sine squared of theta from both sides, I so minus sine squared of theta, I get cosine squared of theta equals 1 minus sine squared of theta. Sweet! So I can actually do a direct substitution for cosine of theta is 1 minus sine squared of theta for this guy right here. So I can write this as cosine squared of theta and I'm done. Equals cosine squared of theta. I've proven the left side equals the right side. Check mark. Okay, so it's all about proving the left side equals the right side. Okay, let's do the next one. Uh, sine times secant of theta. So again, I'm pausing for more than five seconds. Okay, sines and cosines. So that's sine of theta. And remember our reciprocal identity. It's, uh, I don't know why I wrote an equal to sign there. Okay, so sine of theta times one over cosine of theta. Which, if I multiply that together, I get sine of theta over cosine theta and that's of course one of our quotient identities that's just equal to tangent of theta so tangent of theta equals tangent of theta check mark okay not bad right okay number four. Oh, one minus cosine squared of theta hmm let me write this out again sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals one so if i subtract cosine squared of theta from both sides I get sine squared of theta equals 1 minus cosine squared of theta. So I'll change that top into sine squared of theta. And the bottom is, a, it's a direct identity, isn't it? It's tangent squared of theta plus 1 equals secant squared of theta. So there's a sub, substitute, write that in there for that. So secant squared of theta. Well, again, keeping your eye on the answer here, it's got to be sine squared of theta times cosine squared of theta. Okay, well, I don't have what I need here, but, oh, wait, isn't 1 over, isn't 1 over secant of theta cosine theta? So, you guys, you can just move that right to the top. 1 over secant is cosine squared of theta times sine squared of theta. Hey, we're done. I know you might say, well, Mr. Kerbis, it's not really the same. Eh, it's like saying 2 times 3 is 3 times 2. Okay, so that's equal to sine squared of theta, cosine squared of theta. Check mark. Okay, it's not bad. All right, let's keep going here. Oh, more Pythagorean identities. So do you guys agree a 1 plus cotangent squared of theta, theta, theta is cosecant squared of theta yeah, that's cool and what's one minus cosine well we are didn't we already do that one one minus cosine yeah that was number four see that right there man right here one minus cosine squared of theta sine squared so let's put that in there sine squared of theta all right that was kind of nice but again keep your eye on what what i want i want cosecant to the fourth of theta so remember one over sine squared of theta is cosecant squared of theta. So again, show your work. Show me that one over sine squared is cosecant squared. Don't write automatically cosecant to the fourth because I'll be like, well, where'd you get to the cosecant to the fourth? And in, in your brain, you're gonna t or you're gonna tell me, well, Mr. Curtis, that's one over sine, and then I moved it up. And well, if I don't see it, you don't get credit for it. So one over sine squared of theta is cosecant squared of theta. So it's cosecant to the fourth of theta. Okay, I don't know why I'm circling it. Okay, but one over cosecant to the fourth of theta, of course, is equal to cosecant to the fourth of theta. Check mark. Pretty easy. All right, let's take a look at number six. Um, cosine of negative angle. Oh, wait. Dun, 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 dun. Cos is pos, baby. So it's cosine of theta over cosine squared of theta. Of course, it cancels. It's like saying x over x squared. So it's 1 over cosine of theta 
which of course is secant of theta equals secant of theta. Done. What? What? That's not bad. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Number seven. That's interesting. Seven's got actually a lot of interesting things, and in it. it's got a lot of uh, trig functions squared. So you had a cosine of squared of theta, cotangent squared of theta, and a sine squared of theta. Is there some combination of two of those that maybe we can use as an identity? Well, I hope you recognize it's cosine squared and sine squared. And what is cosine squared plus sine squared? Or sine squared plus cosine squared? Same thing, right? Isn't it one? All right, one. One plus cotangent squared of theta. Oh, hey, that's an identity. What's one plus cotangent squared of theta? The bonus point goes to the cotangent. So it's, isn't it cosecant squared of theta? Hey, we're done with the problem. Not bad. Okay. So it gets a little more challenging now. They, these problems get a little tougher. Okay. But eight is basically, I need to foil that top part out, that one mi minus tangent of theta. Please don't do don't square it and go, oh, that's one squared and tangent squared. Okay, that's horrible math. Okay, you've got to write it twice. If that helps you, I'm going to actually, I'll give a little room here. So if you want to, it's one minus tangent of theta and one minus tangent of theta. So if I FOIL that, I get one minus tangent of theta minus tangent of theta plus tangent squared of theta minus secant squared of theta all over sine of theta. Okay, so what do I have here, math fans? Man, you better be looking at a tangent squared of theta plus one, right? So tangent squared of theta plus one, you can write it as secant squared of theta. It's one of our identities. Minus two tangent of theta minus secant squared of theta all over sine of theta. Well guys, the secants cancel out and we wind up having negative 2 tangent of theta over sine of theta. Well, we're still not where we need to be. It's negative 2 secant of theta. Huh, I don't really know what to do. <gasps> sines and cosines. So it's going to be negative 2 sine of theta over cosine of theta divided by sine of theta so when I want to divide that, do you guys agree? I'll, let me put a 1 underneath there. And then I can change that to, let me, let me just go up here. Uh, do you agree that's negative 2 sine of theta over cosine theta times its reciprocal? So it's changed the multiplication and reciprocal. So it's 1 over sine of theta. Everybody cool with that? And look what happens. That cancels, and we have negative 2 over cosine theta, which I can move that to the top, and it's negative 2 secant of theta, and we're done. Check mark. Okay? So, got to know that. Got to know that. Just it's it, These take practice, guys. You have to do your homework. If you don't do your homework and you think you're just going to look at my answer key and go, oh, I kind of understand. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. You're going to be doomed, man. You are going to be so doomed because you are not going to know how to do the problems. You have to practice this. So what you do is you practice it. If you totally get stuck, then look at my solutions. But otherwise, don't look at my solutions unless you're, uh, uh, unless you're stuck. And you know you got the right answer because the left side equals the right side. There's no answer key for any of these. Okay, I mean, I have my solutions and how I do it. But there is no answer key. You're proving the left side equals the right side. Once you've proven that, you're good to go. All right, so number nine. Okay, again, they, it get, they get a little challenging. So number nine, the deal is um, I want to get a common denominator, okay? I want to be able to put those two together. So this is going to be a little messy, but I'm going to multiply. Here, I'm going to leave a little bit more room here. I'm going to multiply this guy by 1 plus cosecant of theta over 1 plus cosecant of theta, and this one by 1 minus cosecant of theta over 1 minus cosecant of theta. Okay, so if I do that, the top gives me 1 plus 
cosecant of theta, and then make sure you distribute the negative, that's important. So minus one plus cosecant of theta. Okay, and then um, on the bottom, remember when you FOIL, it's like saying um, x minus two times x plus two, right? If I had FOIL that, I get x squared um, plus two x minus two x minus four, so you get x squared minus four. It's a difference of two squares. So you don't need to write it all out. You can just do one minus cosecant squared of theta. Okay, all right. So do you guys see just a couple things? The ones cancel. And I wound up having two, it's in red. Okay, so it's two cosecant of theta over, and what's one minus cosecant? Again, if you need to, write it out. It's cotangent squared of theta plus one equals cosecant squared of theta, right? And one minus, do you guys agree? I'm going to subtract cosecant squared of theta and subtract cotangent squared of theta from both sides. So technically, one minus cosecant squared of theta equals negative cotangent squared of theta. And a good indicator that you're going to have a negative in that answer, math fans, is this. I have a negative in my answer right here. Okay? So if you have a negative there, that's a good indicator that this negative is going to come in handy. So sure enough, 1 minus cosecant squared of theta is negative. It's negative cotangent squared of theta. All right. Now remember what I have to, let me get rid of some of the stuff here. What I still have to do is I need to have it look like negative 2 tangent secant, right? So I don't know what to do, sines and cosines. So it's gonna be two over sine of theta divided by negative cosine of theta squared over sine squared of theta. Okay, so that's gonna be two over sine of theta times its reciprocal, so negative sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. Okay, and then you can see, let me change my pen color here, that the sign's going to cancel with that, and I wound up having, it's a little ugly, but I wound up having two, uh, or negative two, sine of theta over cosine squared of theta. Now again, you might kind of look at this and go, well, Mr. Curtis, this is still, it looks complicated. I, I need this, negative two tangent secant. So here's, here's my thought. Um, I'm going to continue on over here. It's negative 2 sine of theta. And I can write cosine squared of theta as cosine of theta, cosine of theta. Okay? So now, check this out. That is negative 2 tangent of theta. And then 1 over cosine of theta is secant. Of theta and that math fans is what we have right here so you're gonna say that equals I'm just gonna put a check mark there okay it always works out always 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 all right so let's take a look at the next one of course you're gonna foil that so I'm gonna do 1 plus cosine of theta minus secant of theta minus secant theta cosine theta. Well, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what to do. I, you can't say one minus secant. I mean, one plus cosine, it doesn't do anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this guy here, at sines and cosines. So it's one plus cosine of theta minus secant of theta um, minus one over cosine theta times cosine of theta. Okay, that's nice. So do you guys agree that cancels and it's minus one? Oh, look at that, that's pretty sweet. The ones cancel. So now, it's still not great, it's cosine of theta minus secant of theta. Still not 
wonder perfect right um because i need to look have it look like this so sines and cosines cosine of theta minus one over cosine of theta what's our common denominator isn't it cosine of theta so i'm going to multiply this one by cosine of theta over cosine of theta so i get cosine squared of theta minus one over cosine of theta and once again, if you want to write your identities, here we'll put it in red here. Sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta equals 1. So cosine squared of theta minus 1, isn't that again negative sine of theta? Or negative sine squared of theta? So that is negative sine squared of theta over cosine theta. Okay, which, if you remember, I'm just going to split it up. We'll go back to black. It's negative sine theta, sine theta, over cosine theta. Okay, so we have this part right here, which is negative, what? Negative tangent. Oh, negative tangent times sine of theta. So negative tangent times sine of theta. Okay, and I don't have enough room to write the other one. But there it is. Always going to work out. All right. A um, couple more. Just two more uh, of these type of problems here. Um, what do you do with that one? Well, I could do um, common denominator. Sounds good to me. So can you guys agree I can multiply... Uh, this one by, let me change the colors back here. I can multiply this one by tangent of theta over tangent of theta. So I get tangent squared of theta plus 1 over tangent of theta. And that's actually kind of nice because tangent squared of theta plus 1 is secant squared of theta. One of our identities over tangent of theta. Now remember, your goal is to get that. Well, I don't know what to do with that tangent of theta. You, gave, you guys should all be shouting out, sines and cosines, Mr. Curvis. And I'm like, that's right. And including that secant, right? So I'm going to do 1 over cosine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. Oh, wait, this is not squared. I'm, I apologize. Okay, so that is not squared. Okay, all right, good. Cool. So now I'm going to just change this to uh, 1 over cosine squared of theta times its reciprocal. So cosine theta over sine theta. So that squared goes out with that cosine of theta, and I wind up having 1 over cosine theta sine theta. Okay, and what's 1 over cosine theta? Secant of theta. And what's 1 over sine theta? Uh, cosecant of theta. And we are done. Okay? All right, last one of the uh, of these kind of problems. Now, you might say, Mr. Griffiths, I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom by 1 plus sine of theta. Well, what you need to understand is tangent and sine really don't go together so if you multiply and get a common denominator and you, just, you go to distribute it it really doesn't help you so what i would do with this one again is i would do this one as sine of theta over cosine theta plus cosine of theta over one plus sine of theta and then i would look for a common denominator and the common denominator actually is cosine one plus sine so i'm going to multiply this one by 1 plus sine and this one by cosine over cosine. Cool. So if I distribute that, this guy here, I get sine of theta plus sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta all over cosine of theta times 1 plus 
sine of theta. Okay? So what do we recognize here, math fans? Man, you better be recognizing this baby right here. Sine squared plus cosine squared. So I get sine of theta plus 1 over cosine of theta. 1 plus sine of theta. Oh, looky there. What cancels? Sine of theta plus 1, sine of theta plus 1. So we just have 1 over cosine of theta, which is secant of theta, and we're done. Okay, so the beauty of these problems, again, they will always work out for you, and if they don't, you made a mistake someplace. Okay? All right, so our last group of problems is basically just to review factoring. So let's do that. You can see we have, in this case here, we have a difference of two squares. We have a sum of two cubes sum of or difference of two cubes and this is a perfect square trinomial okay so we have really four different things here one's it's the sum of two cubes difference of two cubes difference of two squares you'll never have you'll never have a squared plus b squared because that's not a difference of two squares you'll never see that okay you'll have a cubed plus b cubed but not squared all right, so the first time, first thing you're going to do here is um, you're going to take the square root of 1, which is 1, and the square root of tangent squared, which is tangent of theta. And you're going to write out, because it's a difference of two squares, it's going to be 1 plus tangent of theta and 1 minus tangent of theta. That's it. It's pretty easy. Okay? Um, the next one, number 14, it's a little tricky because it's kind of a big difference of two squares. It's basically 4 minus, like, x squared. And x happens to be um, that whole thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of 4, which is 2, and the square root of 1 plus sine of theta squared, which is 1 plus sine of theta. Okay. So, um, and sometimes people get confused with like, that's not a perfect square, but because you have a square there, that's why it's a perfect square. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, actually, I'm going to use brackets here instead of parentheses. I'm going to use both. So it's going to be bracket uh, 2 plus 1 plus sine of theta times... 2 minus 1 plus sine of theta. Okay, so again, difference, so it's 2 plus that and 2 minus that. Now you gotta, you got to simplify it, all right? I don't want two sets of brackets here, so you definitely have to simplify it. So that's going to be uh, 2 plus 1, so it's 3 plus sine of theta. And this one is 2 minus 1, so it's 1 plus sine of theta. And that's it. Right? That's relatively easy. Not bad. Okay, next group of problems, it's just a trinomial. So it's like saying 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. And you probably should recognize that it's a perfect squared trinomial. 4 is perfect, the 1, and then it's negative 4. I mean, it's, there's ways to recognize that it's perfect, okay? Because it's really just like 2 squared. Gives you that... Uh, you know, that 4x in the middle. Okay, but let's let's just talk about it. Um, if I want to factor this, the one I just wrote up on top there, I'm going to get 2x and 2x, and then it's going to be minus 1 and minus 1. You guys agree with that? If I FOIL that out, I get 4x squared minus 2x minus 2x, which is minus 4x, then plus 1. So it's really 2x minus 1 quantity squared. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use the trig in there now. So instead of putting 2x minus 1, it's going to be 2 sine of theta minus 1 squared. And that's it factored. Okay? 
Okay, looks pretty reasonable. Okay, so number 16, it's kind of the same idea. Um, it's basically 3x squared minus x minus 2. So you're putting your two sets of parentheses in here. I mean, you guys should know how to factor. I hope you do, okay? But certainly that's going to be a 3x and a 3x, right? Or 3x and 3x. It's 3x and x. Okay? And so 3x and x. And then... Now, what are the signs going to be? I'm actually going to do it wrong initially. I'm going to put a minus here and a plus here. And I know it's got to be a 2 and a 1. And you're going to be, uh, it's going to be 2 and a 1 here. If you put it the other way, you'd get 6x. And that you know that's wrong. So you guys should have some idea how to factor. But if I FOIL this out again, I'd get 3x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 2. And that gives me plus x. And I need a minus x. So that just means I change the signs. That's all it means. Okay, so obviously this has got cosine in it. So instead of 3x plus 2, it's 3 cosine of theta plus 2. And uh, cosine of theta minus 1. And that's what you have. You have the answer. Right. Okay, we're good to go. Okay, cool. All right, so everything's got cosine in it, and that's factored. That's pretty easy. Okay, the last one is a sum of two cubes. So, you know, you might think I'm talking about soap because I'm in, I'm concerned about your hygiene. Okay, you should be using soap so you don't smell when you come to class, okay? But soap does not stand for that. Soap stands for same sign opposite sign always positive okay and that's just to put your signs on there so what I always tell kids to do you take that one and you take the cube root of one which is one and that one you take the cube root of tangent cubed of theta which is tangent of theta Okay, so when you draw your parentheses, it's the same sign, opposite sign, always positive. Those are your signs. And remember in the first spot here, you just put the first two terms, 1 and tangent of theta. For this next spot here, you're squaring the first term, so that's 1. The last spot, you're squaring tangent of theta which gives you uh, tangent squared of theta. And this one right here, you're doing the product of the two. So it's one times tangent of theta. Okay, so it's minus tangent of theta. And that's your answer. Okay, so that is a sum of two cubes. Um, difference, of course, the, the signs would change. That's it. So kind of all in a nutshell here, math fans, I showed you all these different identities to be able to apply them to verifying these identities. Okay, so that's what this whole deal is. And I, and I kind of did, um, uh, I did one through, obviously one through 17, um, if you, uh, well, I probably didn't tell you when to stop, but probably you went through eight to, uh, to, for day one, maybe seven or eight through day one, and then we're going to do the rest on day two, okay? So that's it, math fans. Um, hopefully you guys are good to go, but please do the homework. You needed to be doing day one and day two, day two homework, and then when you get to day three homework and day four homework, it'll all kind of roll together and you guys will be successful in what you do, okay? That's it, math fans. You have an outstanding day. Adios and goodbye.